Hello everyone, it's that nerd Ryan here. And first off, I want to thank you guys for coming back to the channel and watching my newest video. I also want to welcome you back to my new series that I've been doing, which is my retrospective on the Pokemon regions. And then also before I start that, I do want to mention, hopefully you recognize the better quality here. Um, I'm still getting used to it. I got a new mic today. You'll see in my vlog that the v mic is uh, actually really, really nice, and hopefully it'll have better quality. I do notice that it is being a little loud though, so hopefully I can fix that in post. But other than that, let's get right into it. So today we'll be talking about the Johto region, which really holds a very special um, spot in my heart since it is the first region that I experienced. So in this video we'll be covering the games Gold Silver, Crystal, Soul Silver, and Heart Gold. So the start of the game um, puts you in New Bark Town which I thought was always the best theme uh, which you'll probably be hearing in the background for this video. I do want to change out the background songs for each region in this video series. So you start out and are sent basically directly to Professor Elm's place and you notice that somebody's kind of watching you just because out of curiosity. I will say I believe his official name is Silver. He is a lot better of a rival than Blue in my opinion. I always just enjoyed his attitude, his edginess, and it doesn't help that right now I'm reading the Gold and Silver manga, and I think Silver's a better character than Gold. Um, so the next point is choosing your starter. So I do always have a soft spot for Johto starters, and it is always a very, very hard topic to choose when I am playing those games. And it usually gets tied between Cyndaquil and Totodile. Now, Totodile was my official first Pokemon ever, but I've always had amazing experiences with Typhlosion. I do remember the first time both of them evolving and the first time battling with them. But for my favorite starter, I am going to have to pick Totodile. Not only because it was my first, but also mainly because I just beat Crystal with a Totodile and I absolutely love him. Now we'll go on to map design since you'll be starting your adventure. I really enjoy the map design. I like how Azalea Town is kind of off in its own little corner and the different caves, Union Cave, the uh, Ruins of Alf, the Lilac Forest, all that stuff. I really enjoy this map and I almost have it down to memory considering how many times I played this generation. So speaking of, while you're walking through, you're going to have some Pokemon that you encounter. Now I will say that I am kind of throwing my top 10 list to the wind here when I talk about my favorite Pokemon from this generation. Some might show up, some might not, but I will say my favorite Pokemon to encounter are Hoot Hoot, a.k.a. Noctel, who's also one of my favorite Pokemon because my favorite animal is an owl. Um, Donphan and Fampy, as well as Sneasel. I do enjoy those char characters as long as we include the Kanto characters as well. Also, we'll talk about legendaries really quick. I will say out of the five legendaries introduced and the one mythical, I do love Celebi and I do love Lugia the most, as you guys probably figured out, but also Entei holds a special place in my heart as well because back when I was at my grandma's a lot, as I mentioned in my Pokemon journey story, I would play Pokemon a lot and she also had a dog named Teddy that always reminded me of Entei. So next we'll talk about the gyms. Now what's pretty interesting about these gyms is that the eight gyms that you encounter are all completely different types than the Kanto gyms. 
which I didn't realize until recently. <clears throat> so, I will say the most standout gems that I have, though, are Faulkner as well as Morty. Just, I remember the classic mazes in each game, the extra step that you had to take to get your final badge, and also the run home from your final badge so you can start heading over to Kanto to fight the Elite Four. Now, something I didn't remember up until my recent playthrough of Crystal was that literally there's only one original Elite Four member in the game from the original games, besides Lance, and that being Bruno. I did think that was pretty cool and pretty fun that you are challenged by different people and also people like Koga. I thought it was a lot more memorable than the original Elite Four. So let's talk about one other thing before I get into story. And it's something that I really didn't want to have to talk about until after, but I just have to say this game series has the best post-game. Being able to go back to Kanto, being able to go and fight Red, all of that was amazing. So let's get into the story. So it is basically the same story as the original game where you have to go around, collect eight badges, and battle the Elite Four and become champion. And then also beat the previous champion um, of two years ago, aka Red. Now, the one thing that I do think has improved a lot since the first games is um, that Team Rocket makes a little more sense. Now, they are still disjointed, like I said in Kanto, but it makes complete sense why they're disjointed this time. They fell apart two years ago and have no leadership because of Giovanni. I completely understand why they'd be disjointed in this game. And not to bash Kanto, but I do like the relevance of the disjointedness compared to the random acts that I felt were in Kanto. So let's talk about quickly the differences between Silver, Gold, Crystal, and Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver. So since the other games came out in a bigger time for graphics and a better time compared to the originals, we do have a lot more content in Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver. I do enjoy that game a little bit more because of all the different content and all the different Pokemon that you can catch, but I will say that the original games bring back such a very nostalgic feel where it's hard not to look at it without nostalgia glasses. So comparing these games to the rest of the Pokemon story, I give the original second generation games a um, 9 out of 10 and the remakes a 9.5 out of 10. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Please share with your friends and please enjoy Pokemon and be safe at this very strange time we are living in. And remember, we're all champions on the inside.